well, well, you came back for part two, and that is awesome. So, let's move on to part two of this video. Most common Unix commands that you should know as a beginner to the Unix environment. And we are moving right along to more. If you remember in the last video, we are looking at this file that was fairly large. I'm just going to, whoa, I'm in the wrong window here. Sorry about that. I'm just going to cat all the files, so I'm basically merging all the files into one, and it's too much to display on the screen. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pipe this to the more command, and that's going to give me a page by page option, so I can actually go through and see everything page by page. And within this mode, I actually have the ability to kind of move around, so I can actually, let's see, page down, and show exactly what I want to see here. But if I want a little bit more flexibility, what I can do is I can actually use another command called less. So I'm piping to less. With lex, less, I can use forward slash top, and that's going to show me all the occurrences of top. I hit n, 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 n. Every time I hit n, it gives me, it gives me the next occurrence of the string top. So I can actually search this. I can actually scroll up. I can scroll down. And I like to use this for really large files when I'm using a production server. I don't want to use up too much memory. With the less command, it allows me to kind of, you know, access the file, you know, in little chunks. All right. So moving along, let's do a, let's create a directory. So we're in this directory here, and there's a directory called new dir. If I want to create another directory, I can type in mkdir and say new dir2, create another, another directory there. So now we have two directories there. And if I wanted to remove that directory, I can actually use rmdir, and I can type in new tab to get to the rest of that, then hit the number 2. So I'm, I'm removing the directory, new dir2, and enter. And let's do an ls to see if it's gone. What do you know? It's gone. So I apparently know what I'm doing here. So let's move on to moving. So let's say I wanted to move a file. So we have file to copy. Let's mv to move file, file to copy. I believe that is the file. Yes, so let's copy that to the new dir forward slash file to copy. Will that work? Will it work? Let's find out. Let's see. So let's do an ls to see if file to copy is here. File to copy is no longer here. So let's do an ls and wdir. And what do you know? It's in that directory. Notice I didn't have to actually go to the directory to see the contents of the directory. I can just specify where I want to list or ls. ls that specific directory, the new dir. So I could do that, or I could go to new dir and do an ls there. Same difference. So there you have it. So let's actually go back one. So now we're in a test directory again and move on to the next command. The next command is sort. So if I wanted to say, let's do an ls on all the files here. Now, ls actually has options that allow you to sort. So Never mind that fact. I'm just going to show you how the sort command works. So I do ls and I do sort, and you look at the the results. And if I do just an ls, and you look at the results, you can see here it's it's uh, it's showing me in a different format in terms of how it's actually displayed. But if I actually want to do, let's actually do a man sort. And that's going to tell me the various options. So you can actually change how the sorting occurs. So you have numeric, ignore non-printing, month sort, numeric sort, random sort. So you can do all kinds of things, or reverse sort. So let's do a reverse sort, for example. So we're going to do a sort again. This time we're going to do a dash R for reverse. Now we see the results of that versus if we just do the sort as before. And we can see the difference. New DIR, long file, so it's going backwards. New DIR, long file, file two, so it's actually inverted the result. So bottom line is, if you have something, some kind of files or whatever, and you want to sort them, you can use the sort command, and you can specify options for that sort command as well, which comes in very, very handy. I used that one time. I wanted to. I had a bunch of data, which had a lot of repetitive values. I didn't want to see the repetitive values, so I sorted them and then I used the unique command so I only see one of each occurrence 
for example. All right, so a lot of different things you can do with that command. Final two commands is telnet is a very common command. Um, you can use telnet to connect to machines. Now, normally, uh, what I use Telnet for a lot is actually as a testing tool. I'll Telnet to the port and IP to establish that I can actually connect to a destination. So, for example, if you have one server that you want to be able to connect to another server and you want to verify that connectivity, you can use Telnet. You Telnet to the port and IP to verify that uh, you can actually establish a connection so that's kind of uh, you have an application that's going to establish a connection and by using telnet you can establish whether that's at, at all possible are the ports blocked you know would, a lot of problems could exist there could be a routing issue but by doing the telnet that is how you can tell whether it, it is possible or not then we have word count let's say we want to know how many characters is in a file we have this long file with lots of stuff in it if I do WC long file you can see it tells me how many lines are in the file, how many words are in the file, and how many characters are in that file. And just like any other command, you have the ability to check it out with the man page, with the manual page, and we can see all the, the various options here so we can know how we can, how we can uh, deal with this. We can do by bytes, characters, lines, you name it, it's all in there. So that is the final command that I wanted to go through in this part two of the most common Unix commands that you should know. But before you click away, I want you to go ahead and click on that subscribe button. It's free. One click. If you don't like future content, which I doubt that's going to be the case, you can unsubscribe just as easily as you subscribe. So definitely subscribe so you get notified when I do these videos. I'm going to do a ton of these videos. And the ability for me to do these videos is going to be all about you and your support so go ahead and click on subscribe thumbs up the video if this was helpful for you uh, comment below share the video put this on whatever forums you know really really help this channel grow it's uh, very important that people realize that YouTube is not television this is an interactive format so you have the ability to kind of guide the way content goes the direction of content goes you see quality content you support it so you get more quality content you have the power, and with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, Spider-Man reference. I'm going to stop right while I'm ahead. So thanks for watching. Computer Programming University.